What is going on guys? Joe with OMGRC.com. Welcome and well, you already know it. You got it in the thumbnail. We got it in the title. So let's get to it. Check us out. OMGRC.com. Got our cool little picture of our garage. Let's click on the pre-orders. Like I said, those links down the description. I did put the links down the description so you can click on them and it'll take you right to pre-orders. When are these things coming out? Or when is this one coming out exactly? Well, we don't 100% know, and neither does Kyosha, but they did state that it should be sometime late January, January, February, sorry. February, I'm going to say into March. So expect it sometime late February into March. Uh, usually if the, Kyosha says late February, I kind of go into, okay, we'll do March. So this is the Kyosha 110 scale EP four-wheel drive phaser mk2 1970 dodge charger it's supercharged v8 gray now uh, that v that ve i want to say v8 the ve is their brushless terms their lingo for it so what do you guys think about this thing this thing's pretty cool i like it uh it has something gimmicky they state as it being gimmicky as well is that it has it's got LED lights. That's awesome. I like it. That's not a gimmick. Those always look good. But it has, you can hook up this mini servo to it. And assuming, because they don't show any pictures of it, is that it will close over the light and show like just that front grill, like a normal like uh, charger would back in the day. So it would just be all grill. And then those would that grill would roll back or however they did it. And then you would see those the, the headlights. So I'm guessing that's how it's going to be. With that option and you'd need that third channel and the other thing is i'm not 100 sensor sure is because i've never used it but this is a third channel if you can use this up or down and it would open and close you know move that servo so again i'm not 100 percent sure how that works so until we get this thing out in the wild or kyosha does a video showing that that'd be kind of cool so it's like hey here's our option and this is how this would function and you can use our remote or our radio and make it all work. So this radio here, transmitter, uses four AA batteries. It's got a nice rubber grip on it, nice little foam pad for the wheel. I love this radio. It's got great distance on it. I've never had it go out of range, never. And I've done speed runs with these radios and things like that. Now, my speed runs are generally not super far, but you know, best as my eye can see as far as that one goes. Um, and uh, anything further than what I can see is kind of sketchy because it's pretty pretty far. Uh, but it does have adjustments on it where you can, uh, yeah, you can turn down that dual rate. So when you're going faster, this thing says it does like 60, 65 kilometers an hour, something translating around like 40 miles an hour. So you'd want to turn down that dual rate so you don't flip your car over going fast and you don't make any sudden moves with your steering wheel. So it just moves it a little bit. So that's what the dual rate is. So that's that. It limits your steering throw on your wheel and here so if you move your wheel more on your on your on your transmitter it doesn't translate into moving this too much with the dual rate turned down so cool um only takeaway for me really is i like to see kyosha come out with some kind of way of getting rid of the body clips the body post you know this thing looks cool it's got little details here i love kyosha bodies and i hate to run them because they look good and they're not too cheap to replace, um, but out the body, the body post, man, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something about that. So, what do you guys think about that? Like, yeah, I like that, but if I change, put a different body on it, you know, the poster there, and that could be something still where they they come out with their own like universal way of clamping on a body, or at least their way of clamping on a body, and then hey, we give you this option too, and that works. I go, oh, yeah. You guys let me know what would would you like to see something like that even though i have no control over that but you can leave a comment like yeah that'd be cool if they did that yeah i think it'd just add better realism to it anyway um all right so what does this thing require so it doesn't come with the battery it doesn't come with a charger and like i said it doesn't come with four you're going to need four double a batteries for your transmitter your radio whatever um you will need to read your instructions if by chance you're more comfortable with a nickel metal hydride battery uh, you can run on 7.2 to 8.4 volts. And if you have LiPo, it's already set to LiPo, so you can run on set the 2S LiPo. That's it. You can't run this thing any more than that. I know maybe the the um, 
Electronic speed controller could run maybe 3S, but in this case here, you don't want to do it because it can't handle 4S, or uh, 3S, sorry. But it's a 4,000 kV, 60 amp electronic speed controller, and as far as it's got a little improved servo in it, underneath that cover, I think it's like 86 ounces, something right around there. A little bit more torque than what the normal one would be with a brushed motor. Other than that, that's cool. I didn't really have any complaints on it. It's got uh, radial tires to kind of help with that higher speed, less deforming going on. So that's awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. This thing has, uh, it's got the longer chassis in it. So if we go right here, the FZ02L, so this is the longer chassis. So this part number here, if you were to look it up, would be FAW210. I think it shows it somewhere in here. But anyway, that's it. I've seen it enough. Uh, if you had the FAW209, that would be a shorter drive shaft, but it wouldn't fit in this. So, uh, yeah, this is the longer chassis. So, cool. It is all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, however you want to look at it. So, it's got plastic dog bones front and rear. You can always upgrade these things, these different swing, swing shafts. I think is what they call it. Um give you you know a little bit more strength in, in your drivetrain. Uh, I didn't see anywhere reading it that it uses a metal spur gear. Yeah, I'm sure it's using a plastic one. The plastic one's fine. The only thing I would kind of FYI on would be uh, just to fill you in on that one would be just to um, open this up. It takes it's six screws. So you got one here, 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 and here, and then you got these two back here. These are the longer screws in the back. Uh, you take this cover off, uh, and you can get to getting your, your motor out and everything, but you can also get that dirt that seems, somehow sneaks its way in, and it starts to eat away at your spur gear and your pinion gear. So when you're done, if you run this thing through the sand, which it's kind of hard to avoid, especially here in Florida, you're going to get sand in it anyways, even though it's trying to be sealed up as best as possible. You're going to get sand, but that sand will eat away at your gears. So the more you can kind of clean in inside there, the better. All this is, you take those six screws out, and it just lifts straight up, and then you can just kind of blow that out. And you can flip it upside down, um, and you can get, yeah, you can get that little bit of dirt that's kind of getting in there. That'll just kind of save that, and you don't want to run this through. You don't want to run it through water. There might be some stuff that's so-called like waterproof or water resistant, but I would really highly recommend you keep it out of that water. Even though I've done it before with some of the Kyosha stuff, but I've had it where it shut down. So because they do show that, or they do say that this receiver box is um, right down at the bottom here. I don't. I don't see it. The RX, which is your receiver box. A receiver box is protected from dust and debris. I don't know if they're just talking about this is the box already, which is just the case for the receiver. So it's not an exposed circuit board. If that's what they're talking about, because this thing has not much space. You get your motor, you get your electronic speed controller, you got your receiver turned sideways, butted up against your servo that's underneath this case. You got your on and off switch. There is no more room. So for this thing to have a receiver box in it, would be like mounted up here or something and it's not so unless this is anyway i don't know i kind of read that and was like what well, there's the receiver so i don't see there being a box it's kind of like saying the electronic speed controller box like well it's electronic speed controller i don't know it's weird how they did it that way so i'm not sure if that was kind of like an oops and it just well, unless the picture doesn't show exactly that uh in some cases like the brushed one they would have a cover over everything which was not great because it just kind of heated things up and then you couldn't expose the heat sink to some for some air to flow over it over the fins this one's got a fan on it so good the only thing you want to keep an eye on would be like the motor especially if you're running it uh when it's hotter outside or if you're running it just overall just full throttle all the time you want to just kind of uh normally what i do is you just do the little finger tap and like ooh okay that's too hot to touch for a long time and if it's touched if you tap it and you're like okay it didn't feel too bad you tap it a little bit more and you're like okay i can keep my finger on it okay it's good it's good or if you use like a infrared gun and you can check the temperature see where you're at with it it's just always good practice to kind of check that you're running around running around a little bit and then see where you're at with those temperatures especially during the hotter seasons or like florida doesn't have too many seasons either it's either cool or hot 
that's pretty much it. So um, that is going to be a wrap on it all. There's your on and off switch. Again, just making sure that uh, you read those instructions when you do get this. So if by chance you are running that nickel metal battery, what have you, it's always good to kind of read over the instructions, kind of to familiarize yourself with it. Other than that, uh, let me guys let me know what you guys think about this vehicle. And if you're going to get one, get it from us, omgrc.com. We'll catch you real soon. Thank you again, as always, for watching and smashing that thumbs up and clicking that notification bell so that way you're in the know when we come out to another video. So you guys take care. Thank you again. Peace.